great pleasure to chair this session uh, on the day of Raghunathan's uh, 80th birthday, that is today. Uh, so we will have a felicitation later, but uh, here's wishing him all the best in the years to come. Uh, and uh, uh, our first speaker today is Professor Collier Telen from uh, CNRS and uh, Université Paris-Saclay, uh, or, uh, or say, I suppose, that was an old name. Um, of course, he's also a very good friend of TRSR yes. with uh, plenty of uh, lots of Is there a problem? And uh, he has visited. Yeah, also the old name. Yeah. Okay, we visited us an innumerable number of times in the past and based us with lots of lectures and other colloquium and seminars. So he will speak on local global principle for constant reductive groups or arithmetic curves. Uh, so over to you, Kalitel. Uh, yeah. All right, thank you, Raja. And uh, thank you very much for the invitation. I'm happy to be, to be here on this day, specifically this very day where, where Professor Morgana was born. Um, I, I, my encounters with, uh, I, I suppose I met uh, Raghunathan the first time I, I came to India, which is 1984. And, but uh, then there was a rather, uh, we had, a, uh, let's say, an inter a mathematical intersection uh, running from, I looked at his papers, uh, probably the first paper, uh, which is connected to what I've, some things I've been thinking about with 1978. And there was a series of papers on the, on the torsos of a fine line and a fine space, which inspi inspired me and my collaborators very much. And let me mention one specific thing, which is the paper with Zoyan Guren, where we worked on the, on the so-called groton dixia conjecture, uh, where, uh, in fact, we, we started, Younger and I started working on this and the uh, work went quite far. But then at some point, uh, Raghunathan gave us a crucial help for that paper. So, okay, uh, that's what I want to say. And in fact, what uh, these papers which he wrote, also the paper with Ramanathan has inspired many people. And let me mention also the work of Philip Gilles in this direction and others. All right, let me start the talk. So, the talk, local global principle for constant reductive groups over arithmetic curves. Um, this is uh, this is after joint works, two papers in particular with uh, David Harbater, Judah Hartman, David, uh, Danny Krashen, uh, Parmela, and Suresh. Uh, so, what is a semi-global field? So, let me write down a, a definition. You start with a complete discrete version ring. The field of fraction is capital K, and kappa is a residue field. The original example of interest is the case of a periodic field. And then one considers a smooth projective geometrical integral curve over the field K. And such the function field of such a curve is called a semi-global field. Okay, it's global in the direction of the curve. It's local in the direction of the field. Such a curve admits a regular projective integral model and many models. And uh, one calls such a model a normal crossing model if it is, well, a two-dimensional, regular, projective, flat, X of R, with generic fiber, X over K, and one demands that the special fiber, the reduced special fiber, is a union of regular connected curve which intersect transversely. And it's been known for many years that such models exist for a curve of a, of a field like uh, K. Okay, that's, a, that's a, a, the model of a semi-global field. Okay, now, if you have a semi-global field, you can look at the various evaluations on that field. So if you have a specific model, you look at the set of co-dimension points on this two-dimensional scheme, and you have two types of such points, the closed point of the generic fiber. And so the residue field there is a finite extension of the, of, the, of the complete field K. And also you have the generic points of the components of the special fiber. And there the residue field looks differently. It's a function field of a curve over the residue field kappa. Okay, to any such point of either sort, you have the local ring, which is of course the DVR, and we denote FV, the completion of F with respect to V. And then when let's omega curly X to be the set of conjunction points of X, or if you want, or, or the associated discrete versions, version rings, or the discrete variations. And then when let's omega F to be the union of all the possible omega curly X for all the no normal crossing models of X of R. If you think, basically, you can think of all the possible discrete version rings on the function field, which occur as a point of connection one on some model. 
right? So that's the set of variations we're interested in. And now we look at the reductive group over the field F, over the semi-global field F. And we're interested in uh, what we denote by Sha curly X FG, the set of um, homogeneous uh, principal homogeneous spaces under G up to isomorphism, which locally at all the completions corresponding to co points of convention on X are trivial. And then we have Sha FG, which is the same, except that you look at the, the homogeneous spaces, principal homogeneous spaces over F under G, which at all the possible discrete version rings of, the, of a geometric origin become trivial. Okay. And that kernel, which is just a set, express the possible lack of a local goal principle for, for a principal homogeneous space under G over F. And let me remind you that a principal homogeneous space under a group over F, over any field, in fact, is trivial if and if it, is, it has a rational point. Right, so this is shy, and we're interested in, okay, in, 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 in this, this set. Okay. okay, what is the motivation? Motivation is there is some analogy with local global problems of a number of fields, which you have heard of in, in Paramala's talk. And also it's a natural, this, you might ask why, why, bother, why bother about uh, these semi-global fields? Well, it's an intermediate problem on the way to local global problems for function fields of varieties of a number of fields. Okay. So uh, to, make, to give a concrete example, uh, if you take a function field in one variable over uh, a total imaginary number field, one wonders whether a quadratic form in nine variables over such a field has a zero. Now, if you replace total imaginary number field by a uh, periodic field, uh, Parman and Suresh proved that any such any quadratic form in nine variables over such a field has a zero. So there's an intermediate split. And of course, you try to get afterwards, you would want another local goal principle, that's, but that's harder. Okay, so for the time being, we're modest and we look at this case of semi-global fields. And that case already presents challenges, namely to find classes of groups for which Sha FG is one, okay, by analogy to what we know about number fields. So for instance, for number fields, we know that if you take a, a semi-simple group of a number field, Sha need not be trivial, as, as, as Parimara reminded you, but Sha is trivial if G is simply connected, Sha is trivial if G is a joint, Sha is trivial if, if the, the function field of G is purely transcendental, okay? So we're asking in this context whether we have similar results. And if not, well, we, we want to produce explicit counterexamples to local global, uh, to, to the local global, sorry, to the local global principle I meant here. Okay. So to remind you, uh, once upon a time, Sarah gave the first counterexamples to the local global principle for semi-simple groups of random field. Okay, uh, this question whether Shaif G is trivial or what, what Shaif G looks like has been investigated a lot in the case of a semi-global field where the ground field capital K is a periodic field. And so Paramala told you uh, many results in that direction in her talk. Okay. So now we want to discuss the general case uh, in, in the present talk. So to, dis to discuss the, the, the idea of discussing the general case that is replacing periodic field by function field, uh, fraction field of a complete DVR with arbitrary field uh, came up in work of Harbater, Hartmann, and Krashen. This is a method which was started around 2009, and it's called the patching setup. Actually, like anything in mathematics, it's got a longer history. But what Harbater, Hartmann, and Krashen did at the time is that they managed to define um, to, to, to produce a theory which was inspired by earlier things like, uh, uh, like formal geometry, but which stood by itself. You can learn it within, uh, within, within a reasonable amount of time. And so here, here, here's what it looks like. You start with a complete DVR, kappa is the field, k is the fraction field, t is, is a uniformizing parameter. We have a regular proper integral curve over r, flat, of course, yeah. And we have the function field, the special fiber, the reduced special fiber, HY smooth, and we assume normal crossings. And now we choose a curly P, a finite set of closed points of the special fiber, and that finite set is supposed to contain all the singular points of Y, which with the assumption that I made, means in fact all this, the intersection points of the, of the components, and at least one point of each component Y. 
Of course, if there are more, at least two components, uh, this is already ensured, but this is to, to cover the case where the special fiber would be smooth. Okay, so we have this fine set of closed points. And now you take the special fibers, these points. So think of a bunch of smooth curves intersecting in points, you delete the points. And now you are the components of the complement. So these are smooth curves. And when defined, when it finds RU, when it looks at the functions on the, on the model, on this two-dimensional thing, are the rational functions, which are regular on this curve U. No poles there, okay? And then R2 is the completion with, with respect to T, and FU is the field of fraction of this completion. And there's a quotient map, because this was functions which are regular on U, so you can induce what happened, uh, these functions on, on, on U. So you have this function, this reductive map, this uh, reduction map, R2 to kappa of U. Now, this is for you. Now, if I take a point P, when it looks at things which are some, some a bit unusual, namely, when it looks at uh, the local ring, the, the complete local ring at P. So that's a two-dimensional regular local ring. And when it was FP, the quotient of this complete local ring. Okay, This is not the topological field. It's the field of fraction of this complete local ring. And then there's a third character. Each time you point, take a point P in the closure of uh, U, when considered local ring, so when one looks at the, the completion, then when localizes at the point P, when takes uh, the completion, and then uh, when takes the field of fraction of this completion, and that's called FUP. So think of P on the on the at the at the edge at, at the at the boundary of U, and then uh, the local you take the local ring, and then you see the branch U going through at point P, then you, 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 you take the joint point and you, you complete and take the fraction. Okay, so that's a DVR. This one is a DVR. Okay, and then there are natural inclusions between these fields. FU sitting in FP, FUP, FP sitting in FUP. And of course, F sitting in everything. Okay, and the field FUP, in a sense, is built out of the fields FU and FP. And the general idea is that you would like to reconstruct F from this situation, the various FU, the various FP sitting in the FUPs for the various U's and P's. Okay. In fact, the inverse, uh, in a specific sense, the original field is the inverse limit of this entire system. That's the gist of the um, Harbeter Hartmann question matching method. Right. So the simplest case is this uh, you take the curve you take uh, for your field for your ring R, kappa double bracket T, where kappa is in a field, and you take P1, kappa of T. Now, the field of fraction F, of course, is double uh, formal power series in T at variable X, X for uh, parameter on P1. Okay. Now, you take U to be the complement. So, the, uh, on the special fiber, you take A1 kappa, which is the complement of the point at infinity. So the it's spec of kappa of x minus one, and p is the point at infinity in a special fiber. That's the simplest case. Okay? And now to give you an idea of what these various fields look like, the the fp I mentioned is kappa is the formal power series in t and x. Fu is formal power series in t, the dimensional parameter on the, on the, on the vertical fiber, over the field kappa of x. This is you had this. Remember you had this reduction map from uh, R u to uh, to kappa uh, to kappa bracket x. Okay, f u is this field, and f u p is formal power series in x, and then formal power series in t. And then you have these various inclusions. Uh, the first time you see this, it is uh, this is a bit surprising, but well, that's uh, that's what it is. Okay. All right. Now uh, let's go. Let's go to uh, what uh, the original Harbeter Hartmann question um, result. In fact, uh, let me think. Uh, okay. So the, the 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 point is this: you take a linear algebraic group over F, you take X over R, this two-dimensional scheme over this complete DVR R, and P as above of this family of closed points, which correspond to uh, basically singular points on the special fiber. Okay. And then you define another type of SHA, not the intuitive SHA which we had with discrete variation rings, but SHA with respect to these various fields which we just saw. 
So you look at H1 FG, and then you go to the product for all the points P, this, this uh, singular points of the special fiber H1 FPG. And also you take all the various U and you take product for U of the H1 FUG. And what, um, what uh, Harbeta, Hartman, Krashen proved in 2015, after the original paper of 2009, to which I will come back, is that this kernel here is in bijection with a double coset, which is the product for all the UP of GFF UP, and then on the left, the product of GFFP, so each P which, which is at the boundary of the U, you send the FP to the FUP, and each U which has a, a UP, a, a P in its boundary, you send, you send FU to FUP, so you have the G of FU going to GFFUP. And so this double coset uh, um, interpretation, I think people who are familiar with uh, looking at curves, uh, groups over uh, a curve over the complex field, we remember such uh, presentations as the, as, the, as the double coset. But uh, in that case, that's what it looks like. And this uh, interpretation, this this of this Sha, in fact, is uh, comes from a closer analysis by Hart Hartman, uh, Harbeter, Hartman, Krashen, of the proof of uh, their basic theorem, going back to two thousand nine, which is that if you take an arbitrary semi-global field if G is a connected electric group and it's an aligned F variety is F rational, that is the function field spirit transcendental, then this double quotient is reduced to one point. So the Sha P in that case is zero. Okay. And that theorem at the time being, when, when they proved that, and it struck us as, uh, as strange because remember for number fields, we know that Sha FG, if G is, is, uh, is semi-simple, we know that Sha FG is trivial if G is simply connected or a joint or rational. So what they were proving was that a uh, uh, local goal principle in the context where the group G is rational, but not in the case when the group G is semi-simple simply connected. Okay? Uh, and in, in the case of number fields, this result, uh, the shy is trivial for G rational was proved I think for the first time by Sansu, but it's really, it comes out of the basic result, which is the case of semi-simple simply connected. And then you, you do a lot of algebra and class field theory to deduce that result, but the original one was semi-simple simply connected. Whereas in the arbiter hartmann krashen result, what they have is rational directly, saying nothing about the sim simply connected case. Okay, so this result was used by Harbeter, hartmann krashen to give, uh, to improve and extend the parameter Suresh theorem, which I already mentioned, that quadratic forms in nine variables of f with kappa finite are isotropic. Okay, now let's come back to the original situation which we had in mind, natural one, which is with respect to discrete variation rings. So for G over f reductive and P in X, the, the set of uh, singular points of the, of, the, of the closed fiber, when proves, that there's a connection between these various sha. So the sha p, the one considered by Harbert, Hartman, Krashen, is included in the sha, in the sha corresponding to one model uh, and the points of convention one. This is for arbitrary g over f reductive. When g over f is better, that it comes from a reductive group of our given regular model, so g over f has good return over x, then one knows better, namely the unions of these various sha p is equal to the sha f. So for instance, if you can prove that the Sha-P GF are zero for the group you're looking at, then you get the div zero Sha also is trivial. Okay. And when G comes for, is even as even better reduction, namely it comes from a reductive group directly over R. So you pull it back to QRDX and then to, to F, then in that case, all the various Sha coincide. Okay. So the one one is naturally in, interested in can be computed by means of the Sha-P FG and therefore, can be computed by means of this double coset formula. So as I said, well, now I repeat things that I've already said. In the classical field, the basic theorem is Sha KG for G a semi-simple simply connected group of a K. Okay. And the triviality in the case of GK rational is a consequence of that fact. So the, the work of Harbert at Pancrashen raised the natural question. Suppose we have an arbitrary semi-global field, no restriction with the field not finite anymore. If G over F is semi-simple, simply connected, is Sha trivial. Okay. And for curves over a periodic field, which was the, the case which actually we, we uh, Parma, Suresh and I uh, thought of um, at the beginning. Uh, in that case, in fact, this, this Sha equals one has been proved in many cases as Parma has explained in her talk, okay? And uh, 
spectacular loss results are the ones which she mentioned, namely the case of AN1 when the degree is not square free and also AN2 with, with a mild reduction uh, condition on the, the prime P, uh, which they obtain using the Harbater Hartman Krashen technique. Whereas the previous result had been obtained using uh, Merkel, Suslin, and, and, uh, and results of Cato in uh, on, uh, higher class three theory. Okay, so in the case of Tori, so in recent papers with this, uh, so these six authors, in the, this was the case of Tori, and then the, the paper which is uh, will be an archive within a, a few hours or maybe a few days. We have obtained results on Shai G for arbitrary semicolon fields f of k. That is now the, the residue field arbit is arbitrary. When in the specific case, when the group G comes from R, that is as, as good reduction, really, very good reduction. So in that case, we, we use, we're going to use the double coset formula to get very precise information on Sha, but under the condition that the group G is very, is very nice, namely that it comes from R. So here's the, the two themes I'm going to mention. And well, the three theorems. So the first theorem is for, um, has nothing to do with simply connective. So take K, a complete discretely valued field, R is string of integers, uh, take a semi global field, that is a function with a curve of K, and X a regular projective uh, normal crossing model of R. We assume that the real field is of characteristic zero here. This is technical. In fact, we could, well, let, let me ignore this. This is not crucial. Uh, we assume that the closed fiber is reduced. And then we assume that the reduction graph associated to Y is a tree and remains a tree under all finite extension kappa dash over kappa. You know very well that if you have a graph uh, describing how the, the, the various, uh, take the curves, take a point for each curve and then link two, two, uh, two points if the curve uh, intersect. Okay? And uh, you know very well that the situation tends to be quite different if there's a loop if, or if there is no loop. So here we assume that the closed fiber has no loop and that also if you take a finite extension of a ground field and you take R and then you take a R dash, uh, the, 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 the relation graph remains a tree. Um, and characteristic zero, this kind of condition is easier to check. In fact. Uh, then the statement is that under this, this tree condition on the, on the graph, uh, Sha FG is always trivial. So we have a, a local goal principle for any retrieve group G of R, provided the special, the, the group G can remains the tree after five extensions. And the proof is quite elaborate. Now, one thing which is not too elaborate, which we knew 10 years ago, is that if you take, um, if you take a good G of R like this, and you, may, you don't make this assumption about the tree, uh, if you take an element in Sha, you can actually, it corresponds to a torsor over F, you can actually uh, show that there exists a torsor over the whole X under G. That is a very nice scheme, smooth, over, over, over KDX, which is a principal homogeneous under G, which restricts to the given torsor on the J fiber. But that's that's all, it's, but we don't know anything about, well, it's a torsor, and so what? So what we show in that paper, in uh, this recent paper, is that uh, under this assumption, okay, characteristic zero, which is technical, but the, this, this tree condition, uh, an element in Sha FG can be represented by a torsor which when you restrict it to the reduced closed fiber, the, whole, the entire reduced closed fiber is trivial. Yeah, that's a quite strong statement, okay? And then when invokes uh, that, so this is the first part of the proof, which is, uh, takes a couple of pages. And then the, when invokes a recent result of, of, Parama, of uh, Philippe Gilles, Paramal and Suresh, to conclude that actually the also is trivial over F. And their result says that under suitable conditions, which are fulfilled here, if you have a, a torsor over curly X under G, if you have two torsor under curly X under G, which under special fiber are isomorphic, then on the, on the model, they're everywhere locally Zariski isomorphic. And this is really a quite subtle uh, uh, theorem. Okay, so now we have uh, uh, a positive result on this question 
or SHA. And now I want to discuss the, the counter examples. And let me recall the notion of R equivalence. So given a connected algebraic group G over a field K, uh, the set of points in G of K, which you can connect to, to, uh, to one by uh, roughly speaking an A1. So the set of points such that exists an F morphism U goes to G with U open in P1K and both EG and P in the image of a set rational point. That these points, which you can link to, to the origin by just one P1, roughly speaking, they actually built a normal subgroup of GFK. Uh, this is a lemma of Philip G, in fact. Uh, the quotient by this subgroup is denoted GFK molar. So what do we know about this, this uh, notion? If we take a connected relative group of a GFK and the cohesion dimension of K is at most one, we know that GFK molar is always trivial. We know that our tori over GFK molar is not one. And for G semi-simple simply connected, we know that GFK modal is one if commission is two in many cases. In fact, this was reported on in, in the paper which uh, Philippe Gilles, Parallel Mala, and, and, and I wrote on the occasion of Fragunathan's 60th birthday. Yeah. So there are many cases where you can prove this. The case of commission dimension three is a mystery. And in commission four, in commission dimension four, there exists such semi simple simply connected group with GFK modal, not one. I, I'll say more about this uh, in a minute. Okay, so now theorem B in, a, in our recent papers says the following. Take a semi-global field as usual with a good model. Take a reductive group of R and we assume that the closed fiber is reduced and is very special. I mean, it consists of copies of P1 kappa meeting at kappa points and forming M cycles. So at least M, M is one, you would have one loop. And also we assume the characteristic is not one of the bad primes of the group G. Then we can measure exactly Shave FG. Shave FG in this, in this case is in bijection of, by, of, with the quotient of G of kappa mod R, kappa is a review field of R, to the power M, M is the number of cycles, by simultaneous conjugation by G of kappa, so you, on both sides. So you, you take an element G and you conjugate simultaneously G1, GM. Okay? Uh, if G of, car, K of kappa mod R is commutative, this quotient is nothing but G of kappa, the action is trivial then, and the quotient is G of kappa mod R to the N. And the side work is that it's an open question whether G of kappa mod R. Okay, using theorem B, one gets a negative answer to the question on semi-simple connected groups over arbitrary semi-global fields. Namely, there exists a field kappa, homological dimension four, a semi-simple simply connected group G over kappa, and then we look at this group over kappa double bracket t, and a, a generally connected curve over k equals kappa double parenthesis t with function field uh, f such that sha fg is not one. Okay. And more precisely, when take here's the field, the kappa, the, the real field we take, we take iterated formal power series four times. Okay. R is kappa double bracket t, k is the field, field of fraction. And then D for D, we, we, we define, uh, we consider a central simple algebra, which is the central product of this four quaternion algebra, which we have from A, B, C, D. And G is SLD, given by the, rejection, the equation reduced norm is one. And for X, we take a regular model with special fiber consisting of a triangle of P1 kappa intersect transverse and rational points, the simplest loop you can think of. Right? And to produce the, re uh, the required counterexamples, it remains to recall that there exists G over such a uh, kappa, which have the property that G of kappa mod R is, is commutative and G of kappa mod R is not one. Okay. And that uh, consequence of two things, uh, result Platonov back in the seven, uh, beginning of the 70s, if you take iterated formal power series four times and you take D equals AB tensor CD over that field kappa, the quotient of the group of reduced norm one element by the commutative subgroup of G star is non-zero. And the other result, which is uh, Voskosensky, Voskosensky using the result of Platonov, if D over K is a central simple algebra of field K, and you take G equals SLD, then G of K mod R is just as K1D. Okay, so in that case, we get G of K mod R non-trivial, and we apply that to, uh, this is our field kappa here, you see, kappa double minus T, and X to curve I mentioned. And uh, I wanted to say a few words about the method, but of proof, but uh, I think um, my time is over. So I, I'll stop here. Uh, 
Many thanks uh, for your talk, Kulacharan. Uh, so, are there any questions from the audience? So, thank you. Can you hear me? Yeah, yeah. we can hear you. Yeah, yeah. I I just wanted to uh, just say, uh, okay. are there any questions from the audience? Okay. Uh, if not, I will uh, will thank uh, Professor Kolyotelin once again. And if there are any questions, I think people are free to use the chat uh, mailbox and post the questions directly to Kolyotelin. Or if I see it, I can uh, forward it to him. One of us, any of us. Okay. So thank you. We'll meet in uh, ten minutes' time. Uh, so. Right. See you then. Thanks. Mm -hmm. Thanks. Paul.